The scandal of lack of care and high death rates over a number of years has raised important questions, not just about Midstaff's hospital, but about society and about the NHS. Now, we've got two experts in the studio to look at some important managerial issues. One is culture and the other is performance indicators and measures and targets. So the two people are David Buchanan and Mike Bourne. Now, David, let's start with you. Culture. What's gone wrong there? Clearly it has gone wrong very badly. And what do we do about it? Uh, first of all, let me say, Steve, that, that really was an appalling set of outcomes uh, at Midstaffs. And as you just said, one of the key recommendations from the Francis Inquiry, which has been picked up with the press, has been about changing the culture of the NHS. Uh, the NHS must have a more patient-centred culture than it has at the moment. Um, our research evidence suggests that that's nonsense. Let me explain why. As you know, we've just finished a major three-year study of the changing role of middle managers in acute care. Uh, and that group of middle managers includes not just full-time professional managers, but also ward managers, ward sisters, modern matrons, senior nurses who have management roles. We asked them what their main motives were, what, what drove them, what, what, where did they get their rewards uh, in those roles. The, the five main motives were making a difference for patients, delivering innovation and change, doing a good job, feeling valued and developing others. What I'm trying to say, Steve, is that patient-centred culture is already there. It's actually deeply embedded. Uh, the NHS has not mysteriously managed to recruit 1.3 million Harold Chipmans and Beverly Allitts over the past five years. That hasn't happened. I think we have to look at uh, Philip Zimbardo's analogy, an American psychologist who talks about bad behaviour, uh, but he explains bad behaviour in terms of bad apples, bad barrels and bad barrel makers. Uh, and a close reading of the Francis report suggests that we need to be looking at the barrel makers, not just at the bad apples and bad barrels. So tell me some more about that, because the, the average person would just say, this doesn't seem right, really. Do we look at just that? If we go back to the motives that take staff into the health service, uh, those motives are stifled systematically by a number of factors. The first of those, and probably the most important, is that the NHS has a top-down, prescriptive, autocratic leadership style. Uh, that comes from the top, it comes from politicians, it comes from uh, Department of Health national figures, and that style is automatically cascaded down into the system. So the first, the first reason for that culture being stifled is simply management style, leadership style. It's autocratic, it's not supportive. The second feature is we have within the NHS a highly prescriptive and very punitive and complex regulatory regime do as you're told, um, basically is what that says. Uh, we also have constant tinkering with structures and with the details of the system with that regulatory regime. Uh, the coalition government was elected uh, on a promise not to drive any further top-down reorganisations of the NHS. That's the first thing they did and that, those changes are still going through. So those, those structures are constantly changing and people have to learn how to work with new structures, new relationships, new people all the time. And I would also have to add that um, the government, this is, we have an austerity programme, um, but the cost improvement programmes that are imposed on acute care in particular are extremely burdensome. Um, only 4% a year recurring finance cuts, uh, but if you're a moderate sized hospital with a 400 million pound budget, 4% is 16 million pounds. And 60% to 70% of your annual spend goes on payroll. Um, Health care quality has to suffer. If, if that continues. That feels like a very thorough analysis. Having said that, it all went wrong spectacularly at Midstaffs. Where do we go from here? I, I think the prescription is probably very simple to state, um, but one would have to recognise perhaps more difficult and complex to implement. I think going back to the reasons why that culture is stifled. I think change has to start at the top. It has to start with leadership style, start with management style, and start with some of the kinds of commentary that politicians repeatedly make about the nature of the staff and the people who manage the health service. That has to change. The, the leadership style has to be more supportive, more listening. Uh, I think the regulatory regime 
uh, would benefit from being simplified and streamlined, perhaps including a shift away from the prescription and inspection regime that the Care Quality Commission operates to what's called a safety case approach, which puts the responsibility on providers, not on the inspector or agency. I think it would also be useful and would cost nothing to give the NHS a period of relative stability, breathing space to allow some of the innovation that's required to happen and take root. And unpopular remark at this stage in the economic cycle, but I think it would be useful to take another look at the pace and scale of funding cuts that the NHS is being asked to make. Now let's have a look, Mike, at your perception. You've got a lot of experience of performance indicators, performance measures, not just in the public sector, but in the, the private sector too. What are your perceptions about what's gone wrong here? And, and again, you know, where do we go from here? Some classical mistakes made at Ms. Staffs. One of the key ones is how do we manage performance? They focused almost exclusively on the financial measures. And we've known for 30 years within the business community that that's a disaster. You've got to look at measures in the round. Uh, and that focus on financials at the expense of everything else went wrong. The second and really important point is about feedback. Measurement isn't just there for forcing people what to do. It's about feedback. And systematically in mid-staffs, they forgot about the feedback, especially as the soft measures. The measures about perceptions of care were not taken into account by the board. That was a real issue for mid-staffs because they then just ignored them and didn't take any point. Finally, I think the regulation is a real issue. If you have people coming in to regulate you day in, day out with prescriptions and action plans day in, day out, when do you actually treat the patients? I think they should take a knife to the regulation regime. They need to cut it down, probably two regulators overall, and the rest has got to be down to local people. If you have professional staff, you've got to expect them to perform professionally and you don't regulate them to death. Gentlemen, any final thoughts? I would have to agree with everything that Mike said there. Um, I, we're in danger, I think, possibly, of abandoning the concept of targets and performance measures altogether. Uh, and I think that would be a mistake. I think the health service, many people in the health service recognise that a lot of the benefits in waiting times in general, in accident and emergency units in particular, have benefited through the imposition of targets. But what we've had and what Mike described is what is colloquially known as a targets and terror regime. Uh, we can have the targets without the terror. And some final thoughts from you, Mike. There's nothing wrong with measures and targets per se because they communicate to the organisation what they're trying to achieve. But you've got to use them in the right way. If you use them to learn and improve, that is what they're there for. If you use them to, to terrorise people, people get terrorised and act accordingly. And that's what we've got to do to, to get the NHS back on track. Gentlemen, both of you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.